Toronto is my home. I've done a lot of my urban wildlife photography here. I've explored a lot of the hidden spaces in and around the city. So instead of doing a travel episode here, which would be weird because I live here, I'm going to do something a bit different. This city has given me a lot of incredible moments, which have resulted in some of my favorite photos. I want to use this episode to show you why I find this city so inspiring. This is a bit of a love letter to the city's forests, waters, and animals. Plus, I'm going to try to get a photo of a raccoon, because, well, this is Toronto. Your city is an incredibly wild place. If your feet only stay on the concrete, you might not know this. But the moment you leave the busy street, everything changes. When you enter the city's forests, parks, or green spaces, you're entering another world. At first, your ears still ring with the sound of traffic. The buses, cars, and trucks make a loud, constant drone. That commotion fills the air of the city all the time. But the forest is able to turn down the volume on that chaos. Even just walking a few steps into the woods, everything gets quieter. At first, all you hear are the noises made by your feet. Cracks, crunches, crackles. These are the sounds of your boots on twigs, stones, and leaves. And then the other noises reach you. The birds are often the loudest. As they chat, their calls ring from high above. Some are sharp, some repeat like dripping water, and some are mysterious. The bird calls stand out like the tallest peak in a mountain range. I really want to do that typical Toronto raccoon story. Somebody gave me a heads up that they had a house under reno that raccoons visit all the time, and they invited me to shoot here. <laughs> this is a dream. If I don't get a good raccoon photo, I should just quit. This is like a balcony. These are grapes. This is from the second story. And this grapevine has made it up here. Ooh. Oh, oh, I see him way down there. They're scratching. I wonder if that was mom coming, third one saying, all right, boys, get down, time for dinner. Breakfast. Breakfast. Toronto's been dubbed the raccoon capital of the world. Torontonians either love raccoons or really don't love raccoons. I happen to love them. I find them charismatic and just a blast to photograph. It's no wonder our city has so many of these guys. We've given them basically unlimited food, and they are epic climbers, so they're good at getting anywhere their nose takes them. I'm from Toronto. I was born here. I've never seen anything like that. That was a spectacle. But unfortunately, I didn't land the photo I wanted. So I want to come up with a plan, figure something out. Because I need my photo here. This is where I'm going to get. 
my Toronto raccoon photo. I'm Max Robinson, and I'm a water sports athlete of color. Nothing really compares to this, like, at all. Um, uh, windsurfing or wing foiling, it's, you know, you're just very much one with the elements. I literally feel like I've blacked out the rest of my life every time I'm on the water, and I just am super present. And um, just kind of skimming across the water and, and kind of engaging and trying to be ready for the next thing I'm about to do. Being out just a couple hundred meters off of the beach at Cherry Beach, on Lake Ontario, looking at the city, like that, that's a moment. You know, sometimes it takes me out of it for a second, just looking at the city and realizing how amazing it is to be doing what I'm doing. When you started out doing this sport, were there many people that looked like you doing it? To be honest, uh, not really. Like, um, I think predominantly the sport is kind of niche and exclusive and, and definitely, uh, I would say, mostly like middle-aged white men will be doing it. So at first I didn't really think too much about it, but then as obviously the years go on, you don't really see anybody else that looks like you. And then I started traveling to compete and people would ask me like, yeah, you don't really see many people like you doing this. I'm like, you know, you're kind of right. Recently I wanted to change that and to create a platform that we've created actually here from the Toronto Wind Serving Club called Level the Playing Field. Uh, we've been able to actually get like, a nice group of people coming out from uh, color communities and I think it's like it's really nice to have that integration down here because I haven't seen that. There's something about basically being able to go to any body of water that you know is accessible and and be able to do flips and spins and, and go fast and rip back and forth. It makes the sport, uh, I think, the best sport in the world. What is this place? Where are we? We're in our, uh, our first retail store, a fish shop in Affinity Fish. I'm one of the owners along with Matt. My name is John Clip. When Matt and I set out to do this, we were trying to kind of answer a question, and that was why did we not have access in Toronto to local Great Lakes fish? Being in the Great Lakes region, we should have better fish than we did. Through some connections, we uh, eventually got out on some boats with the fisher folk that fish the Great Lakes um, over in Lake Huron and just started trying to problem solve, like what? Why was the fish so beautiful out there on the boats, and why was it not coming back to Toronto in the same shape? And a lot of it just has to do with the, the food system being so industrialized and focused on volume rather than quality. So after, you know, now it's been two and a half years that we've been doing this, uh, we've really set up a, a quality-focused system instead of a volume-focused system. Is there good stuff coming out of the lakes? That was kind of the most confusing part for us getting into it. You know, I've been fishing like for, for as a hobby my whole life, so I knew the, the quality of the animals in the lakes and the rivers. Uh, here in Ontario, and that wasn't even remotely the same as the quality of the fish on ice at the local fish shop. But unfortunately, now people have the, uh, the stigma or the idea that, oh, you know, local Ontario fish isn't good. You know, I should, I should get my fish imported from Japan. I should get my fish imported from New Zealand. But when you're working with the amazing fish of the Great Lakes that have been handled properly, they're incredible. So we're really proud to be working with uh, a sustainable fishery here in the Great Lakes where things are treated with respect and kind of handled properly. And this is your, this is your mission, this is what you guys yeah, do, yeah, this is your Yeah, of course, vocation. of course. Yeah. And as, you know, as the space continues and we're able to kind of explore more facets and do more dinners here and have guests come in and eat with us and dine with us, uh, both Matt and I are super excited about being able to show people all the different ways that you can eat this fish, all the different species that are out there that, you know, it's not just salmon and trout, there's literally hundreds of different species out there in the lake that, um, that we can be eating. <laughs> Your fish is famous. Welcome to night two. Last time I was here, I got some photos that were okay. I want to do better. So tonight, I'm using my nighttime camera setup. I thought this was going to be kind of quick and easy, but the raccoons came early tonight. So they're here now. 
you are witnessing the fastest setup in camera trap history. So I've got to work around now. I just leave this thing out overnight, putting it in this place where I hope the raccoons are going to be. If the raccoons kind of cross the sweet spot that I have set up, that triggers the whole system and an awesome photo happens. Coming. Coming up. Don't claw my face. Please. Oh, I see ya. Yeah, yeah. No, stay back. That is an absolute paralyzer of a fall. Yikes. This is the shot I want, looking this way. You got the cityscape in the background, you got some lights, some towers. It's cool back there. That image looks awesome. I am done. I'm gonna pack this up, get out of here, and let the raccoon show begin. city in the background. <laughs> uh, oh, there it is. What a beautiful coat. There's another one. There's a third, a backwards one. Ah! I wanted this photo just to be a little homage to this animal that I love. They're not everybody's favorite, but they're remarkable. They've learned to live here in this city and thrive. I'm really happy with that image. I'm really happy with that image. Living in urban areas is so much better when we're reminded of how wild they really are. And it's that wildness that we need to protect. Photography is good for showing us what's out there, but that's just one tool. We need to be engaged and think differently about how we can protect our green spaces. Because if we don't, our forests will become much quieter. <laughs>